Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Event Industry News Podcast. This podcast is kindly sponsored by Visit by GES, our smart event solution partner. For more information on Visit by GES and its smart event solutions, head over to visit.ges.com. So a very good morning, afternoon or evening to our podcast followers, whenever or wherever you may be tuning in from. Don't forget to stay up to date with all of the latest content from eventindustrynews.com by downloading the Event Industry News app, which is available for all the major mobile devices. You can also get your opinions to us using Twitter via at Event News blog. So, if you've booked a hotel or a flight in the last few years, chances are you will have heard of Expedia. Having launched in 1996, the website is one of the world's leading online destinations for consumers and business travellers looking to book travel packages and services. The company is now set to launch its first dedicated service for the meetings and conference industry, and to tell us more about it is Felix and Deutsch, Head of Mice and Groups at Expedia. Felix, thank you very much for joining the podcast today. Thanks for having me. Hi, James. So, most of our followers, I'm sure, unless they've lived on another planet for the last few years, will have heard of Expedia. But tell us what's new and tell us about what your particular uh, department is bringing to market uh, for the meetings of the conference and the events industry. Yeah, sure. Um, so, I mean, um, as you said already, um, everybody knows how to book flights online. Everybody knows how to book hotel rooms online. I mean, the the whole world is getting digitized. You know, I mean, you can look into all the different uh, processes. You can think of ordering a taxi, ordering your food. Uh, it really doesn't matter, but um, everything gets more and more and more automated and digitized. Um, and if you look into um, the meeting industry, or the group lodging industry, groups industry in general, what you will see is that um, it's pretty much the opposite. Um, so there's no automation present. Um, things are not really digitized. Um, the, the, the dominant process still is a manual RFP process. So um, customers that want to book, for example, meeting rooms or want to book um, group lodging for, for example, an offsite, um, still call up hotels, um, write emails to hotels, send requests for proposal forms, fill out these forms, and mm -hmm. might get a response within a couple of days, couple of hours, whatever. Um, but it's pretty much the opposite It's uh, than how normal um, or how, how online processes are looking today. And and um, what we are trying to achieve is really kind of to, to take this current process and to revolutionize it how um, the hotel industry was revolutionized a couple of years ago, so how flights uh, were revolutionized and the way of that you can book your flights fully automated. And we're trying to bring these automated processes now to the events and meeting industry in a way of that you as a customer, um, you just select your meeting space, um, you select your group lodging, your food, your beverage, your equipment, and so on. And everything um, is calculated in real time. So rather than you calling up a hotel um, or filling out lengthy, mm -hmm. um, boring, unsexy forms, um, you get with a few clicks, you get directly priced, and that is checked for availability. And if you like it, you can book it. So that's kind of what we are working on to really bring um, the meeting industry into the 21st century. So how will this process work? Because uh, the, the first thing that comes to my mind is um, if I go onto a, any sort of booking website for a, for a hotel, um, there are options to book a certain number of rooms, but there's often a small piece of text at the bottom that says, if you're looking to book a party of 10 or more people or 20 or more people, you have to contact them directly. So this is a way that people can make large group bookings for, for conferences without the need to go through this whole process. So tell us about that side of things first of all. So, um, so what you're describing, like the, the, the cap of normally is like nine, ten um, people. It's mainly revenue management um, reason why this cap is there. And it, uh, we talk about if we talk about that piece, we talk uh, um, actually about the so-called displacement analysis uh, a hotel revenue manager is doing when receiving a group. So what he is um, actually checking when receiving a manual request, he checks what is the displaced revenue I'm displacing when getting this group and what revenue am I getting from this group um, incrementally, for example. So that's actually what happens in the, in the back, um, why hotels are asking for a manual process um, when having more than nine, ten people um, because of doing this displacement analysis. That, that's the background. Um, our solution mainly deals with, uh, to be perfectly honest, we currently focus on the um, on the meeting room side of things um, because this is something um, that 
wasn't done in the past. So with our solution, you can, um, as a hotel, set up a lot of different rules um, uh, in the back. So to, for example, say if the customer wants to book um, a certain um, a certain seating plan uh, in a certain mm -hmm. room, then the seating plan, for example, um, the row seating plan, if you want to book your meeting room in rows, should have ah, actually yes. a yeah. different price than if you book the same room but with a circle seating plan. Sure. Yeah. And the yeah. reason for that is the reason for that is um, just think about the capacity of a room um, with circle seating plan versus row seating plan. It's a totally different revenue because I'm getting a totally different amount of people in the room. And these are the the things we are working on to allow you to set up a lot of different price rules um, based on lead time, based on um, length of stay, based on seating plan, based on party size, based on season, based on weekday, based on year, based on whatever you can think of, in order to automate this this process. But the back uh, really and especially in the lodging um, area was actually this displacement analysis uh, where people came from and um, looking into the meeting room side there was never a process or a system where uh, revenue managers were able to set a lot of different rules um, for different setups of a room for example and this is now possible with the software to have not any more static prices but extremely dynamic prices that's the the concept of the whole system so in order to, I mean, to let me let me know if I'm too technical here, yeah. So if it's no, too, but, no, but, uh, but if it's too boring, let me say, let me know if it's too boring what I'm saying here, yeah. In terms of if it's too technical or not understandable. Um, so because I'm, I'm aware of that, it's quite detailed in terms of revenue management, and I don't know if this is necessarily um, um, extremely interesting. I don't know. But what's your question? No, no, no. Absolutely. Um, I, I think it's important that people understand why. If we look at the example of um, booking websites that request you to manually contact a venue if you want to book a large party, it's important for people to understand why because a lot of people will just think, well, hold on, what, what difference does it make? Why can't I just book 20 rooms? Why can't I just book yeah. 30 rooms? Surely the hotel wants to be full and it wants to sell its rooms. So I think it's important yeah. that, first of all, we understand why hotels request all this information and the, and the variable factors that are involved when we're booking conferences. But I suppose what yeah. that leads yeah. to is... Um, um, in order to offer this service, in order to offer the best possible fluency to the service for you, you have to presumably at the moment rely on the venues themselves providing all this information to you so that it can be input into a mm. system or be accessible. So how difficult has it been to bring this to market by first of all obtaining the information that you need from the venues? Uh, it's a very good point. I mean, um, the the piece here is that, or the problem we are facing is um, um, digitizing an industry is not a technical question. Yeah? Technology is actually quite simple. All the technical processes behind the concepts are actually um, quite simple. We're not talking about rocket science. Yeah? Mm -hmm. The problem is um, um, the change management that happens within um, hotels because, uh, well, not only within hotels, but also um, on the customer side as well. And um, so it's it's mainly actually a perception or a knowledge issue, less a technical issue. And um, to your question how difficult it is to onboard hotels, it really depends uh, on the venues and on the hotels and, and, and where they are with their knowledge and with their mindset. So we, we do have partners that are um, extremely mature in their thinking in terms of how they do revenue management today and this is where we see okay they just actually copy paste all their thinking into our tool set um, and so before they maybe worked in Excel because there was no tool for doing that uh, and now they copy paste their rules over into uh, into our tool and then the onboarding is quite simple yeah so it's quite um, easy for the hotel because it's just a copy paste of, of let's call it mindset yeah? mm -hmm. um, the problem comes in when a hotel or a venue starts to actually think about these things that uh, a meeting room should cost um, differently if I'm changing seating plans because um, at the end it's about revenue per square meter but maybe not a revenue per hat because the count of hats in a given room changes with the seating plan yeah and this is kind of a new thinking because the whole industry was uh, think or is thinking until now in DDRs so it's really about a revenue per hat which doesn't sometimes really make sense as I said in the beginning um, a meeting room can host a given on a seating or based on a seating plan either 50 or only 25 people. Uh, so it's a mm -hmm. DDR of um, either um, 50 per head, which means I'm either doing um, 2,500 euro or pounds with the room or 1,250 um, um, pounds with the room. It's the same room, which doesn't make any sense. Yeah? And this is where hotels suddenly understand, mm, 
okay, there's technology that allows me to input all this data, but in order to input something, I first need to make up my mind actually what I want to input. And this is where it becomes difficult because this is uh, where um, hotels first need to, un and then venues need to first understand actually what should be my strategy. And as soon as I figured out my strategy, I can insert it into a tool. And this is what sometimes or actually quite often is missing. So um, revenue management is quite something, was quite something very, um, 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 normal and, and, and known already since years in the lodging um, industry, in the lodging space, but not so much in the meeting room space. So this whole discussion about um, total revenue um, is, is fairly new. Um, classically, specifically hotels looked into the lodging side of things, and that's why it becomes complex. Do, have you, um, uh, how detailed has your analysis been in identifying the size of meeting rooms that you think will be mostly utilizing the service that you're launching. Is it likely mm. to be sort of smaller to medium sized venues that don't get used as frequently? Because I would imagine big, big conference venues in in high quality venues tend to be quite well booked up anyway. The diaries are full. So have you anticipated that this will be targeted to a specific sector? Yeah, um, I think one, one um think that we definitely need to clarify here. If we talk about automation, everybody thinks about, oh, then I will be unemployed in a couple of years because my job will be uh, automated and I will be out of my um, job. So I think that's not what's going to happen. So yes, there will be a new technology that automates, um, um, to your point, um, requests for small groups. Um, where you set the limit is really up to, to each venue and to each hotel. Uh, I would probably say it's it's very simple to standardize things between um, 20, 30, 40 people, but to the point if it comes to the huge mega conferences, you wouldn't book this online instantly. I mean, this, there's no way because it's, it's just too complex. And what we are actually saying is, hey, um, you can standardize and automate your meeting business um, throughout all your touch points, uh, be it your website, be it your sales team, be it third-party portals, automate that piece of the equation and save time here in order to take the time that you saved here and put it on a big meeting. So it's not really about we um, that, that to make you unemployed or anything, it's about giving you as a sales manager, for example, a tool to save time on the stuff where actually there's anyway no margin. Yes, it's a bread and butter business from a pure numbers perspective, but not actually from a revenue point of view. From a revenue mm -hmm. point of view, um, if you make the, the calculation here, 70% of all the meetings, this is roughly what in the UK is um, until um, 50 people, delivers only between 35 and 40% of your revenue. Yeah, so 70% um, of your time is invested uh, into only uh, 35 to 40 percent uh, of your revenue. What we are saying is save time with the small meetings um, and put it on the big meetings uh, because in the big meetings this is where the, the, the margin is and where you have much more um, sure. much more fun working on essentially at the end of the day. So that's really um, the goal. It, it works best with uh, small meetings um, because it can be standardized, because the margins are anyway not high, um, you don't want to waste any time in this segment and put the time you saved and put it onto the big events and really invest time there, consult your cu uh, customers, really invest time in love. And, and you, you make a very, very good point there, and this is exactly what I was thinking, is that um, in in smaller to medium-sized hotel venues, if we use that as an example, hotels that also have meeting rooms available to them, the teams within those hotels are often responsible for marketing the conference and meeting spaces, for selling the conference and meeting spaces, and also then for delivering the events themselves. They're very, very hands-on, and they have multiple roles yeah, within yeah. their teams. And if you're giving them less administration to do by having to answer emails and having to send quotations and things like that, you're actually freeing up more time for them to deliver the events themselves with yeah. a higher level of um, service. That's exactly what it is. It's about kind of delivering more service to the customer where he really needs it, but he doesn't. I mean, think about it. You know, if if a customer calls you up and you say, "Yeah, thanks for calling me up. I can send you a quote within, um, let's say, in best case within eight hours." Um, especially, I'm 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 based in London now, London office. I mean, it's so rapid here, so fast. I mean, people say, "Listen, my meeting is tomorrow. I need." 
I need it right now, the quote, or my meeting is actually later, or I, I'm, I'm a walk-in customer even sometimes. So mm. things are so fast here, and what you see also in the industry, the lead times are getting shorter and shorter and shorter every year. Um, so, and that's exactly the point. Uh, if you could give a customer uh, the information instantly, that's the price, it's available, yes, here you can book it. That's an amazing customer service because why would you invest time in such an administrative task of sending out a quote yeah, um, where you should invest your time is preparing the meeting space, um, um, consulting him in terms of his, his wishes, yeah. what he needs and so on, but not by sending the quote, uh, why are you hacking um, standard text and, and prices into a quote, doesn't make any sense, which are even not revenue managed, it doesn't make any sense from a revenue management point of view. So it's exactly what you say, it's about standardizing the boring stuff essentially. In terms of location, um, I would presume, rightly or wrongly, that um, Expedia would, would want to see this become a, uh, a global service, so it doesn't matter where you go in the world, you can go on and, and, and find a meeting room, but have, have there been specific parts of the world and specific areas that you are initially going to launch this service to trial it? So yeah, we launched this uh, service first uh, in uh, Germany. So that's a, for an American company quite unusual, Germany first. Um, so uh, the reason for that was two things. Um, Germany, it's um, maybe not really co common knowledge, but it's the second biggest meeting market in the world. Um, uh, depends on the study you're looking in. It's between um, starting at uh, 30 billion up to 70 billion, but again, depends on the study and what you count into the um, um, the, the bucket. Um, yeah. But it, it's huge. It's the second biggest market after the U.S. Um, this was one reason why we went there first, uh, make a proof of concept. It's geographically quite um, simple. It's, everything is within a reach of a couple of hours. Uh, it's one time zone. And um, the third reason was um, um, Germans are, I believe, um, quite, there is a, there's a tendency to, to have perfect solutions. And what we thought, like, if we can convince Germans, um, it probably is a little bit easier to convince other um, markets as well um, that are maybe more like not as perfectionistic as the Germans are maybe. This was just an assumption. Yeah. I think uh, it works out actually quite well. So what we are hearing often in markets where we are going now with the solution is like, whoa, um, that's massive. I don't need actually all these different um, options. I, it yeah. would have been enough to just deliver that to me, but you're already delivering that, so it's quite over-engineered, and I think the reason is that we are trialing this since 2015 in Germany, and it was that there was a lot of requests coming in uh, from German hoteliers saying, I need that, I need that, I need that, and at the end, we were ending up of building modules to say, actually, you can only use that module, you don't have to use these modules, uh, if you only want to use this, that, this module as a hotel, that's fine, and um, so it started in Germany, and we are now rolling out um, at the end of this year, so beginning of Q4 in first English-speaking markets, so UK, mm -hmm. US, um, and so on. Um, but it's really actually driven by the chains. Um, so our um, um, first customers we're going after are chains, and it means um, um, the chains are deciding where we are going first. So we are onboarding currently already um, properties in um, I think in Thailand and the Arabic Emirates, some properties. So it's really driven by these, uh, these these customers. But ultimately, at the end of the day, you're right. The goal is to have a um, a global solution. Yeah. And and by by being driven by the 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 major chains, then presumably the smaller chains in the independent venues as well will follow suit because they will see a lot of the time they react to what the major chains are doing. They see how the markets are moving and the trends and the fashions within their operations and they want to reflect those because they don't want to miss out on business. So is the, is the intention then that um, you will actually get incoming requests from smaller venues and independent venues? We do have already. I mean, we do have two different um, segments. Um, um, we have a huge chain, chain segment, and that's for us classically a little bit easier to, to, to handle as a customer um, segment. But we have a couple of hundred uh, individual small um, properties already in Germany that are live and using the tool. And what is quite interesting um, um, is that, yes, you might be right that chains often have the power to use new tools and to initiate new processes, but what also is true that smaller independent uh, properties and small venues are actually much faster. Um, so I think it's not a, um, 
it's not a uh, um, one or the either. So we, we, we cater both segments. Um, so mm -hmm. we are catering to large chains as well as to independent hotels. And um, there's value for both. I mean, um, yes, the, the solution which we built uh, consolidates data, which is extremely valuable for um, for chains because they suddenly have one single view uh, throughout all their properties in terms of meeting space prices, for example. But also for small independent um, hotels and venues, it, perfectly makes sense because to your point um, in smaller venues specifically um, sometimes you do everything you are the owner you are the salesperson you are yeah. the marketing guy you are the revenue manager you are the banquet manager you are everything and also for for these venues um, the solution makes makes sense because it automates standard processes and tell me what when you then look at the other side of the market, which are the organizers themselves and the people who are booking the meeting rooms. Um, how is it intended that you will communicate this service and market this service to meeting bookers, to business people, to event organizers? Is there a strategy in place to actually bring that to market and communicate what is now available? Yeah, so uh, it's a good question because a marketplace always consists of, of two sides. So first, you have to supply, and I think um, this is where we are good in, and this is really what we are focusing in 2017. So our goal in 2017 is to bring this to chains, to bring this to independent hotels worldwide, um, to make this use on their own website, on their own, um, and within their own touch points, they have their customers, either be it sales team or website or email or whatever. So that's really our goal. So we are, we are. Um, automating their direct business that, that's um, that's very important to understand um, so we are adding value for the direct um, sales business the second piece is um, how can we bring incremental transactions to these um, these hotels and um, this will be um, focus in 2018. That's not so much focus um, this year. This will be more focus in 2018, where we are also plugging this into our different uh, marketplace solutions. So you can think of, for example, Agencia. Agencia is uh, one of the biggest TMCs um, in the world, talking already to corporate customers. So it's quite a logical step to also say, why can't you also book meeting space on, um, for example, Agencia or on on any other brand. Um, so, but this is really something for 2018. 2017 is really about focusing to get the supply in, um, delivering this on the websites for the hotels, and 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 optimizing their internal business. 2018 will be about driving incremental business through our marketplace. And even though some some listeners, some watchers of the podcast may s feel that that's a a big difference in time you know to do that one year and then in, you, you know you're going to wait until next year to, to market to that audience but presumably if you start marketing to organize and to meeting bookers too soon and you don't have the level of venues on board then it could possibly have a negative effect if they go on to use this service and they can't actually find the venue that they want you have to get all the venues in place first don't you before you start pushing it to people yeah, sh sure. I mean, um, uh, otherwise the churn will be quite high because, I mean, if you offer a marketplace with only a couple of, of hotels or venues being live, that's not really a marketplace. So, I mean, yes, a marketplace lives because of the variety and because you can have three-star, four-star, five-star um, hotels. You can have venues without any lodging. So that's the that's the goal of, mar of marketplace. Um, having said this, um, you, do, you do already see um, some of our... Um, hotel partners in the independent segment as well as in the chain segment that use on their own website. What you already do see is that there is an extremely high repeat rate. So once a customer is using this, uh, for example, on the Best Western, uh, this is one of our clients in, in, in Central Europe, Best Western, or NH, mm -hmm. for example, is a Southern European chain dominantly in Spain, uh, uh, Germany as well. Um, so what you see is there, whenever a customer goes on their website and uses this, um, then customer comes back and uh, the time between I make my first booking and my second, my third booking gets shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter because the customer is suddenly getting used to the new process and says, wow, this makes sense. I'm not waiting anymore for uh, a proposal like for a day or hours. I'm just getting directly the price back. And um, there was, I think, last week or the week before, there was a, a new record we hit. This was um, the the highest repeat uh, booking within one day, and this was a customer who booked 15 times on one day. So he booked essentially, as well, I think it was a series he did. Um, so he booked essentially within um, eight working hours, he booked 15 meetings, and what you saw is like the first, uh, I think the first meeting was booked, I think like 12 o'clock. Then it took like a couple of hours, and 
he was probably not sure what was this now that I book instantly, but suddenly it was like bing, 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 mm -hmm. and this customer booked 15 times. So what you saw is like, okay, the, the time between first booking and second booking was a couple of hours, but then suddenly he did all his bookings for the rest of the year um, within a couple of, 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 of minutes. And that was a new um, record, and this is what you can see here is the solution already delivers value, even on, on, a, on a chain or on an independent level, even though on our end the marketplace isn't finished yet. Um, you mentioned uh, earlier on in, in the podcast about um, some of the, the factors that are involved when booking a, a meeting space. So you can request the layout of the room. Do you want it in a theater style with rows of seats or do you want circular tables? Um, you, presumably pe people can request food packages, things like refreshments and yeah. coffee. Um, how much detail do you think you can go into when it comes to customizing a booking uh, uh, experience um, and I'm talking about things like Wi-Fi setting up dedicated um, people often request a, 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 a dedicated line for their Wi-Fi or ISDN services or audio visual mm. equipment projectors microphones additional you know um, hardware like that do you think that that could be incorporated into the service as well so that people can literally get everything that they may need for a meeting through the um, through the Expedia experience yeah, I, I think so. I mean, there's no reason why not. Um, I mean, um, I mean, think about it. You can you can even rent out your your flat on Airbnb. And the flat isn't something extremely personal. It's extremely um, valuable. It's extremely emotional. Uh, and on the other hand, you're booking a meeting room, which is I wouldn't say it's not emotional. I mean, often for the people that are actually booking it and organizing, it's quite emotional. But um, why wouldn't it be possible? I mean, these are technicalities, um, um, and I think right now you can already book, I don't have the exact figure, but I think you can already book up to, I would say, probably like 30, 40 different amenities in our system. So this is, for example, Wi-Fi, microphone, um, um, sound um, sound service, stuff like that. So you can book a lot of different amenities and food and beverage as well. I would say probably that's already too much, you know. I mean, if you look into mm. the really the 80% in the standardized segment that is booked in terms of amenities, you probably would find that it's always the same stuff. It's always a beamer, it's a pinwall, um, it's a, uh, sorry, a projector, um, a, a pinwall and a screen, probably Wi-Fi, but you would see over and over and over again the, the, same, the same elements. So that means it's not about, and that's what I meant earlier, it's not about that you automate the highly customizable events, that's, that's not what you want to automate. You want to automate the standard stuff that you don't need to customize, where the mm -hmm. customer knows exactly, I made this meeting the last uh, 20 times exactly like that, and this is how it should be the next 20 times, bam, I want to book it, by. So and that's what we're trying to automate, and that is kind of 70% of the market. The other things, um, hey, I have a vegetarian in my group, and um, or I have a couple of thousand people um, joining and at the end of the day there should be on stage a lion walking in and the lion shouts out loud. I mean that's that's a, that's 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 an event, you know. I mean we're not trying to automate events, we're trying to automate small standardized meetings. Sure, sure. And and just to clarify then, um, uh, it, somebody that, that goes through the service and, and makes their booking, six months down the line when they return to that destination, they can presumably just go into their account and if they want to just repeat exactly what they had before, click of a button, there's no need to even fill out all the criteria. They can just say, I want to repeat that booking and it's as simple as that. They yeah. could return every three months, once a quarter, once a year and just repeat the booking. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, you can just go into the solution. Um, you book something, um, then you change the date, the same event again, uh, book it again. Um, you can also send it to, uh, to your manager for approval, for example, to say, actually, I don't want to book it, I want to send it over to my manager. Um, yeah, I mean, um, that's, that's, that's one use case and one scenario, yeah. Um, I'm curious to, to, to ask as well um, for our podcast watchers and our podcast listeners who are um, interested in, in what it is that you're doing at Expedia at the moment, is there a, a dedicated uh, page or is there anything set up where they could find out more information about this particular service and how it could benefit them? Yeah, uh, so the problem is it's uh, mainly because we started in Germany, is a lot of things are still in German, but if you sure. go, for example, on meeting market, uh, 
So it's hello.meetingmarket.de slash chains. This is where, for example, you will find, I mean, probably you can put like a like a link in the, the video here below. Absolutely. Um, we'll, we'll, put, we'll put a link up onto, um, onto Event Industry News along with this podcast so people can head over there and, um, and get that link. Yeah, there's a link, there's a video, uh, um, a how-to video uh, and so on, so you'll find some information in English as well, yeah. Fantastic. Well, um, it, it's time to wrap up um, today's episode, but uh, a fascinating talk today with uh, Felix und Deutsch. Felix is the um, head of mice and groups at Expedia. Everyone will have heard of Expedia. Perhaps people won't have heard or won't be aware of this fantastic service that they're bringing to market that will allow event organizers and meeting booking, uh, bookers to go online and in the same way that they're used to booking a flight or a hotel, they can book their venue, they can book all the services that they need alongside it. And um, I'm sure it's going to be something that will will certainly add to the, the automation of the events industry. But as we've highlighted during today's podcast, what it will ultimately do is improve the level of service that the people who are working in the industry are actually delivering to the people that they're working with. So Felix, thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us today. Um, don't forget that the Event Industry News podcast is sponsored by Visit by GES, our smart event solution partner. For more information on Visit by GES and its smart event solutions, head over to visit.ges.com. Thank you very much for joining the podcast today. My name is James Dixon. Very, uh, very sincere thanks again to Felix and Deutsch from Expedia for joining us today. A great episode of the podcast, and we'll see you again soon. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.